am i audible to all yes sir audible yes sir we are audible okay so uh, let's start with today's session today we will learn about some linux basic commands so yesterday we have uh, learned how to prepare the virtual setup that means how to uh, create a virtual machine on the uh, desktop or uh, your laptop using the centos or rhl so we have created uh, yesterday so today we will start using the linux operating system so we should remember some uh, basic uh, things about the linux operating system that linux is always case sensitive that means all the upper cases and lower cases we need to remember what we are using because linux is a case sensitive according to the usage of the character we have to remember let me show you here i have created abc.txt so here ab is small and b is in caps so i need to remember this one if i will use that abc.txt it will not work because i am using the wrong wrong file name i need to use the exact file name because linux is a case sensitive all control delete reboot the operating system so likewise windows in windows if you will uh, use the all control delete it will ask for the it will prompt to you know, supply the username and password but in case of linux it will reboot the operating system we need to remember this one configurations are saves in files and directory structure i have already told you you can see all all configuration are uh, files and directory these are in a structure like file and directory structure likewise in uh, windows all configurations are uh, some different paths and uh, some are in uh, program level but in case of linux all configurations are stored in the file structure and all data will be stored in the directories so we need to remember this also configurations are saved in files and directory structure so minimum partition requirement for a linux operating system is swap at least 256 mb slash boot 250 mb slash allocate remaining space slash home at least 100 mb slash boot efi only on the system with efi firmware nowadays all the computers are coming with two type of firmware one is bios another is uefi in case of we will using the efi firmware at that time we need to create the partition slash boot slash efi so this is a mandatory partition we need to create whenever we will create a uh, whenever we will install a linux operating system yesterday we have created the partition uh, automatically we have not created the manual partitions so whenever we will create a manual partition at that time we need to remember this one and uh, this is the mandatory partitions and this is the mandatory space we need to allocate to the partitions swap at least 256 mb and swap what is a swap partition swap is a space in the physical hard disk that will be used whenever the actual mem uh, physical memory will be consumed 100% that means if i have the linux operating system installed with 2gb memory and whenever it will consume the 2gb memory 100% memory it will consume then at that time swap swap will be start working as a memory so that is the work of the swap partition if i'll show you you can see using the df minus h command we can take the partitions here you can see slash this is the root this is the boot and other partitions are created but these partitions are created automatically i have not created it manually if we will create manual partitions then we have to follow this structure and if i will show you the uh, swap memory the command will be free minus h you can see swap space it is created with 1 gb and this is the memory this is the physical memory and this is the swap space allocated from the hard disk 
so recommended swap system swap space because you only will work with the production servers at that time the servers will be high end server so we need to uh, know what is the uh, uh, swap space we need to allocate according to the resource available in the server whenever the server having memory physical memory less than 2 gb at that time we have to provide two times of the amount of the ram and whenever the uh, physical memory is greater than 2 gb and between 8 gb at that time swap space will be equal to the amount of ram and whenever swap space is uh, sorry uh, physical memory is greater than 8 gb and between 64 gb we have to provide at least 4 gb swap space but uh, but always we will provide the 8 gb swap space that will be good for the operating system and whenever it will be more than 64 gb then at that time also we have to provide the 4 gb swap space but it is always recommended to provide 8 gb swap space more than uh, uh, 8 gb physical memory present in the linux server so this is the table we need to remember what will the swap space we need to allocate to the high end servers then linux uses basic types of login screen there are two types of login screen we can get in the linux operating system one is virtual console another is the graphical login you can see this is the graphical login of the server and whenever we will uh, connect with a putty this is the ssh uh, tool through which i am connecting to the putty and this is the terminal through which also i can use the commands this is the terminal so here i can also execute the commands and i can work according to my requirement so root user have the hash in the prompt here you can see this is a hash and here you can also notice that i am now in root users login so now it is showing me the hash prompt so whenever we will see the hash prompt in the uh, login screen at that time or the term, uh, terminal you will guess that i am in the root users permission or i am in the root users console so now i have checked the change the user to the duk user using the su command now you can see it is prompting me the dollar prompt so this is the difference whenever you will get the you will see the hash prompt that is the root users console and when you will see the dollar prompt it will is the users prompt then each user has a home directory for personal file storage slash root is the home directory for root user slash home is the parent directory for the all other users example slash home john id shows the information on the current user now you can see now i am in root users console so according to the theory i should be in the slash root directory so how we will check we will use the command pwd that means present working directory in which which directory now i am working this is the slash root so this is the home directory of the user and for other users you can see slash home this is the parent directory of all other other users vishnu john dk john and raj this is the home directory for the users created in the linux vm and id shows the information on the current use you can see this is showing the detail about the current user that is the root user you can see i have sent from root user to view now when i am using the id command it is showing the details of the view user so virtual console six virtual consoles available in linux operating system one is graphical console and server system often having the only one virtual console desktops and workstations typically have both that means whenever you will uh, use the uh, linux operating system users actually prefer to not use the gui console so in production systems production servers you will not get the gui console you will only get the virtual console and for the desktop and workstations that means uh, client pc or client desktop uh, there you will get the 
both the GUI and the virtual console. StartX command is used to start the X server. X server means GUI tool. Whenever we are in a uh, command uh, command prompt, if you want to start the graphical uh, user interface at that from the command prompt, we will use the StartX command to start the GUI. Switch among virtual consoles by typing control of control alt F1 to 6. That means I have told you six virtual consoles and we, we can use the alt control F1 to F6 to interchange between the consoles. So if I will show you here, now I am in a console. If I will press the alt control F2, It is not working. So let me show you here. All control. You can see my console changed to the uh, uh, F2 login. So if I will use the F3 also, likewise it will start. So let me log into the server. Here I will use the StartX command. It will start the GUI prompt. You can see GUI started. So StartX command is used to the start the GUI console. Access graphical console by pressing all control and F7. X window system. X window system is Linux graphical system. XORG is the version of the X window system used by the Red Hat. Desktop environment. Here you can see that this is the desktop. This is the desktop of the Linux operating system. Genome, the default desktop environment, and KD and alternate desktop environment. That means the this is the default uh, desktop environment of the Linux server, and it is used by the that means it is the Genome desktop. An alternate desktop is the KD desktop. So root user. Root user is the special administrative account called super user and the root user has the unlimited capacity to damage the server. So root user is the administrative account in Linux operating system and have, it is called the super user and the root user have the unlimited capacity even if to damage the server. That means using the root server we can crash the Linux operating system also. So it is always uh, best practice to create users and assign that users to the users to uh, work with the Linux operating system and the uh, root access should always the with the uh, system administrator or the administrator of the server and all other users should be always login to the server with users account. Login into your system with the login name and password we will see something like this. I have already shown you whenever you will use the user at that time you will see the dollar prompt and in case of uh, root your account, you will see the hash prompt. So SU creates new cell as root. I have shown you already shown you. SU div, it created the new console for the root user, uh, sorry, for the duke user. And sudo command runs command as root. And whenever we will in the, uh, we are in the user's prompt, if you want to uh, perform some task with the root user's permission, at that time, we have to use the command sudo, sudo yum install teller. That means with the root user, we will get the, sorry, with the normal user, we will get the root user's permission using the sudo command. And for that, we need to uh, configure some special configuration so that sudo command will provide the user uh, root user's permission to the user. Here, I will show you sudo. You can see Duke is not in the sudo file. This incident will be reported. That means I am trying to use the sudo user's permission, but uh, the root user uh, not pro not provided the permission to the Duke user. That's why this incident is reported. 
तो कमांड स्ट्रक्चर तो कमांड स्ट्रक्चर विल बी कमांड ऑप्शन आर आर्ग्यूमेंट इफ यू सी हियर आई हैव ए यूज ए कंप्लीट कमांड हियर दिस इज द कमांड एंड दिस इज द आर्ग्यूमेंट एंड दिस इज द सॉरी कमांड ऑप्शन आर आर्ग्यूमेंट दिस इज द कमांड दिस इज द ऑप्शन एंड दिस इज द आर्ग्यूमेंट single letter options usually preceded by dash and that can be passed by as slash uh, hyphen a hyphen b hyphen c or hyphen abc that means three letters we can also as uh, um, uh, use with a single dash but in case of complete word we can we have to use the double dash so minus minus help this is a help is a complete word so for that we need to use the Minus minus here. So if I will so give you an example, here telnet is a packet. Here, if I want to install this, command will be rpm minus ibs. This is the options. That is ibs and then telnet. This is the command. This is the option, and this is the argument. Here we are using the single uh, letter uh, option. That's why we will use the single dash. And if we will uh, provide you another example. Subscription manager. This is another command. Here we are using the argument as double dash because auto is a uh, complete word, so we have to here use the double dash. So arguments are file names or other data. This is a file name, or this is a package name. So argument always is a package name or a file name or a data, and options will be uh, single letter or a complete word. So there is always a space between the command and the and the dash. Multiple commands can be separated by semicolon. Some commands use no options at all. Dead. This is a command, and it is not using any option. And it is a single command, and it will work without any option. Pw is also an example of a command which is not using any option. But in case of RPM command, we need to specify some options. Likewise, cl call. This is also a command which will display the calendar, and it is not using any option. So q. Quits from the many commands like more and less. Control C also quits out from the many commands. So if I will show you, I am using the top command. Here you can see it is showing me the uh, server's resource utilization. To uh, uh, exit from this uh, prompt, I need to use the command Q. It will quit the screen. So likewise, Control L clears the screen. Control F. Puts the cursor at the beginning and Control E puts the cursor at the end. And what is and date? What is uh, what is uh, many levels of help? So you can use what is command. We will use to get the help and uh, man also man and info also uh, commands to get help about the commands. Uh, so the, this is the session we have covered today.